Hi, this is Elizabeth with Callie's Clips and Crochet Creations. Um, today I thought I'd make um, a video to help you out with the Fall Harvest Infinity Scarf or Cal. You can make it either way. It's simply, uh, you make it all the same length and then if you want a cowl, you join it at the end for a nice um, doubled over cowl. It's nice and long. Um, I love this um, pattern and texture that I used on this. It's kind of like offset little um, works of clusters, but it reminded me of fall falling leaves and um, the colors were gorgeous in this colorway. Um, you all voted for this colorway when I was trying to decide what I wanted to make with my tweed stripes because I have a ton of it. Um, and I've discovered, um, thanks to just someone letting me know, that this colorway is no longer available. This was the Rainforest colorway. Um, of course, Tweed Stripes is still around and they have lots of other beautiful colorways, so don't feel like you have to make this a fall-themed scarf. You can use another. Um, one of my favorites is, um, I think it's Caribbean. It has beautiful, what I call peacock colors. There's purples and blues and um, there's just some other fun colorways. Today, the colorway I'm gonna use is um, fruity. It's a bright one. I wanted you to be able to see what I was working with well. And that's the first one I grabbed when I reached into my bucket of tweed stripes yarn. So we're going to have a bright um, scarf to show you today. Um, so what you'll need, you'll actually need two skeins of these to complete the scarf. Um, unfortunately, with it being a fluffy, bulky yarn, you go through it pretty quick. So you will need two of those. Um, you'll need a K hook. Let's see if it'll focus on that. It's a 10 and a half 6.5 millimeter hook and let's get started. Um, this scarf is an intermediate pattern so it uses a little bit more intricate stitches. Um, it uses some cluster stitches to make up those fun little round ball shaped <laughs> um, pattern there. So uh, the beginning of the pattern um, <clears throat> we will start with 22 chains. I've already chained those out for you. Um, and let's get started. The first step, now this pattern is kind of wordy, so I hope I don't get lost with you. Um, make this bigger so I can read it. Um, so we've chained 22. We're going to work a three double crochet cluster in the fifth chain from the hook. So this is our first chain here. So one, two, three, four and five. We're going to work our three double crochet cluster in there. Let me set this down. I want to be able to read this to you for those that may not read patterns. Um, to do a three double crochet cluster, you yarn over your hook, which I've done, and then you will insert the hook into the indicated stitch, which is that fifth chain. I'm going to count to make sure I'm in the right space. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. And you'll insert your hook. You will yarn over and pull up a loop and you will pull through the first two loops or you yarn over pull through the first two loops essentially you're working half of a double crochet so we're going to work um a double crochet or half that double crochet again you'll yarn over insert into the same space yarn over pull up yarn over and again pull through two and you'll repeat that one more time bringing us to the three double crochet cluster so yarn over insert your hook into the same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and you should have four loops on your hook. You will yarn over and join those all together. And that gives us our first three double crochet cluster. If you notice in the row one notes, it says the first four chains that you skipped count as the first double crochet and one skipped chain. So that does count as a stitch in this. Uh, next, we are going to chain three. This is where it can be a little bit confusing on where you're supposed to work. You're gonna chain three up. So this is our bottom and we're gonna chain three up. It says to work a two double crochet cluster in the third chain from the hook. So in this case, we're talking about these three chains. We're not talking about down here. So we have one, two, three. We're going to be working into this bottom chain here, and you're going to work a two double crochet cluster. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook into that chain there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, working half that double crochet, and we'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, 
pull through two and you should now have three loops on your hook and we'll join that together to form our two double crochet cluster. <clears throat> so essentially that's kind of worked on top of that globe and we're going to work the next um, three double crochet cluster into the same chain that we worked the first one and that'll kind of give us that round leaf shape I suppose you could call it. So we'll work another <clears throat> three chain double three cluster <laughs> I can't say it. Three double crochet cluster. So yarn over, insert into this same chain we worked the other. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and we'll work those half, half of the double crochets, not half double crochets. Yarn over, insert in here, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert into the same stitch, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over to bring us the three double crochet cluster. So at this point, you should have a nice little rounded um, series of clusters there to make that little globe or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> next, we are going to chain four. One, two, three and four and then down here we're going to skip the next four chains so one two three four and in the next chain we're going to work a double crochet and there is that and then you're going to chain four Okay, and then you're going to skip the next four chains, so one, two, three, four. And then we're going to work that series of cluster stitches again. So I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Hopefully you understand how to do that. Say hello to Lucy. This is my puppy. She can't stand not to be near me. So she's trying really hard for me to play with her. <laughs> Alright, so here is the three double crochet cluster going to chain up three and then we'll work the two double crochet cluster and the third chain from the hook which is this one and the three loops that'll form our two double crochet cluster and then you're going to work that third one again in the same one you worked the first one to form that nice little shape Alright, pull that together, and when you finish that, you'll go ahead and chain four, and then you will skip four. So one, two, three, four, and then you'll work double crochet into the next one. And when you come to the end of the row, you should have two chains left. You are going to chain two. You will only skip one chain and then you will double crochet in the last chain. And I'm going to go ahead and chain three so that doesn't unravel. It's part of row two, but I want to show you this so far. So <clears throat> you should have a series of clusters right here. Chain four, a double crochet, chain four, the series of clusters again, chain four, a double crochet, and then a small space and a double crochet. So you see the pattern kind of repeats to here and then it has a little bit of a change and that's going to help offset <coughs> the pattern. So let's move on to row two since this is the row you will be repeating throughout. Um, I've already chained three and that counts as the first double crochet. Of course you're going to turn your work and then you are going to work a three double crochet cluster in the next double crochet. So not the first, it's going to be this one that's hanging here all by itself. And we'll work that cluster in there real quick. Oops. All right. And we're going to chain three. 
and we'll work the two double crochet clusters. So here essentially we're working um, another one of those little cluster, cluster of clusters. <laughs> and then you'll work another three double crochet cluster. So this is all being worked into the top of that double crochet. It's just hanging there all by itself. So, and then we should chain four. Pull up some yarn here. Okay. So at this point, you should have an offset globe worked on top of that double crochet. Now we've chained four. This can be a little bit confusing if you don't remember that we actually had a chain space. <laughs> and I um, changed the pattern. It did just say space and now it says chain three space. So you know what you're looking for. Um, so we chain four, you're gonna skip these four chains. That's your four chain four space and you're going to double crochet in the next chain three space. The chain three space comes from when we made our two double crochet cluster, we had to chain three. So that's gonna be the chain three space on top of that cluster. And you're gonna simply just double crochet in that space on top of the series of clusters. And then you will chain four. You're going to skip the next chain four space, which is this whole big area. So skipping past that to this double crochet and you're going to work your clusters on top of that. It's a little tighter. Oops, now I'm going too fast. <laughs> Oops, almost, nope, oh, it's there. <laughs> My work's getting tangled. One, two, three, we're gonna work the two cluster. Then we will work the three cluster, pull up some more yarn. Okay, and I'm guessing, let me look back over here, we will chain four again. And it says to double crochet in the chain three space. Again, that chain three was made with the two double crochet cluster when we were working up. So basically you're just crocheting on top of those. Right into that, do you see that? Make sure you can see it. And let's see, my yarn doesn't want to pull out here because I got a little tangle. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, and then it says repeat across to last three double crochet cluster, which is this here. You're going to chain two. And since we don't have anything to skip, it just basically says you're skipping the cluster area and you're going to work a double crochet in last double crochet and in this case we said that the um, the skipped four chains count as a double crochet and chain one space so you should just double crochet in the top of the chains there since it counts as a double crochet and that will bring you to the end of your row. So I'm going to go ahead and chain three for the next row. So at this point, this is what you should have. They're offset. So this row made a cluster here, and then you double crocheted on top of that one. Then you made a cluster, and you double crocheted on top of that one, and then it brought you to the end of the row. So that is what you should have so far. I'm going to go ahead and um, work one more row for you just so we make sure we're working in the right areas. So this is what we have here. This is working up beautifully. I'm really liking this. Um, okay, so we chained three. Again, that counts as the first double crochet. We're gonna cluster in the next double crochet. So here it is. And we'll go ahead and start working that series of clusters again. I'm gonna do this pretty quickly because I hope at this point you know 
how to do the cluster. I just really want you to be able to see it. We're going to work up three for the two cluster. And then we're going to work a three cluster down back here again. Awesome. Okay, and then chain four. And again, you will work <coughs> in the chain three space, which should be at the top. You kind of have to feel for it in there, um, but you'll find that little space at the top of the two double crochet cluster. And chain four. And skip on over to the next double crochet and we'll work our clusters. Oh, I'm just loving this colorway. I don't think I've worked with this one before. It's fruity. Maybe we can change it up with this one and we'll call it the the fruit scarf. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it does kind of look like little fruit. Little balls of fruit. Clusters of fruit. Maybe we could make it with <coughs> the peacock colorway or Maybe there's a grape one. We could make it, call it the grape scarf. <laughs> now I want to find one. I'm going to have to go look. Oh. That's kind of fun. All right. So there's our series of clusters again. We're going to chain four. I love how open this scarf is. Um, but yet it's still warm but not heavy. So we're going to work in the chain three space, a double crochet. That kind of brings us to the end of the round. Chain four. Just kidding. Chain two. I knew that didn't sound right. <laughs> I'm used to chaining four. So we're going to chain two since we're near the end. Skipping that last cluster. Um, you got to kind of pull your work straight so you know where the ends of the rows are. Don't Pull it that way. Um, again, the chain three is our double crochet since that counts as a stitch. So, just kind of work through that. And that brings us to the end of that row. And again, you're just going to repeat row two throughout. So, now you have the next row of offset globes. So this video is way longer than I anticipated, but I wanted you to see how it goes. And again, you're just going to repeat that same pattern. I mean, this works up so fast and you will get it memorized because basically you're just working those clusters um, in the double crochets and then chaining four to get to the next space. And it just works up gorgeously. So um, I hope that answers your questions and clarifies a little bit more um, how that's worked because once you get it, it really isn't so bad. And um, if you do have any more questions, feel free to email me anytime or leave your um, questions in the comments below. Let me know what color of tweed stripes you might like to make it in. There's so many wonderful colorways. Um, and honestly, you don't, you could probably use a worsted, a heavy worsted weight yarn as well. Um, tweed stripes is considered a bulky, but it's a light bulky. It's not as thick. Um, and since gauge isn't really essential for this pattern, um, with it being a scarf, you could probably use a worsted weight yarn and um, a K hook. It'd be pretty loose, but you could even go down a hook. It would just not be as wide of a scarf. It could be a skinnier scarf. But that's what's fun about crochet. You can change up your hook and your yarn and you could get a totally different look. You can even use a bulkier yarn and um, get yourself a little bit more fluffier um, type scarf or cowl. It would be nice and cozy. Um, so thank you so much for watching the video. Um, if you would love more tutorials and videos, I'm hoping to make more of some of my patterns in the future. Um, please subscribe to the channel. I do share this channel with my other blogs, so you will sometimes see, um, some personal blogs or some other tutorials that I like to share. So, um, and if you haven't joined us on Facebook, I would love to have you on Facebook, Twitter, following on the blog, um, so you don't miss out on sales, promotions, discounts, and more free patterns, of course. So 
thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate um, you choosing to work on this pattern, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.